and welcome to another Doctor Who Big Finish video. In this Doctor Who Big Finish video, I'll be looking at my top 10 favourite releases from 2017. So looking at everything Big Finish released back in 2017 and picking 10 favourites. Um, now I will be honest, I haven't listened to everything what Big Finish released in 2017 because just look at the output they have, it's just crazy to keep up with it. I've only just started listening to the second, uh, the fourth series of the early adventures of the second Doctor. Um, so if one of those releases deserves to be on this list, I will say when I do the overviewing series for that later down the line. Um, so yes, um, I found this a lot more tricky than 2016's one. Um, because I feel like where they had problems with the 2016 releases, I feel like they refined them and made them better for 2017. So I found this a lot more trickier because there are a lot more releases what tempted me this year. So leaving me a bigger spectrum to play with, which is quite fun. But also quite challenging because there's quite a lot to pick. Um, so yes, if you want to check out my 2016 list, I will put that the link in the description below, and also I'll put a link in the description to my Big Finish review playlist, so you can check out more of my Big Finish stuff if you want to know more about certain stories on this list. So without further ado, let's begin this top ten. <laughs> So kicking off my top 10, and number 10 we have the 8th Doctor Time War box set, Volume 1. Now I wasn't exactly sure on if this would make the list, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy this release, but I did, and it is a great release, it does feel very War Doctory, so if you like the War Doctor series, then you're going to like this, because it does feel like they've basically rewrote the Doctor stuff for the 8th Doctor, it does feel very like this was meant to be like the War Doctor's 5th box set, um, but yeah, we've the first story, Starship of the Theseus, um, it starts off with this quite fun release, you know, and you, you kind of are a bit confused by it because the Doctor with a companion. Is that the 8th Doctor's Time War companion? I'm not going to say if it is. Um, but by sort of halfway mark, this is when the story starts to put the time in Time War. And I will say that the theme of this box set, you know, this box really does set, you know, really does put the time in Time War. So it really does explore that element within it. Um, the second story, Echoes of War and sort of Conscript, do feel like they are very War Doctor stories. Uh, but yeah, very good series and definitely worth checking out if you're a new listener to Big Finish. When this, you can't go wrong with this, this is a very good release to kickstart your Big Finish collection really. So yeah, 8th Doctor Time War box set, volume 1. At number 9 we have Classic Doctors, New Monsters, Volume 2. Now I believe that this is the last Classic Doctor's New Monsters set what they're doing and what a way to go out on because Volume 1 back when I did this list in 2016 Volume 1 was at number 10 so Volume 2 is at number 9 so it has improved and is the better set in my eyes. So yes we see the 4th Doctor introduced to this set in Night of the Vash Narada and that's probably my favourite story of the set where we see the 4th Doctor and this crew of people on this abandoned theme park world so naturally you're having this great imagery set into it and the Vash Narada I didn't think would work on audio I thought how are they going to do them um, but they just work extremely well and I think the story what John Dorney created was brilliant because normally the Vash Narada are hunting people but instead the Vash Narada are being hunted you get this wonderful supporting character called Amanda Steele who is this sort of I guess bounty hunter I want to say but I don't think that's the right word um, but her and the fourth Doctor, you know, sort of lock horns, but as the story progresses, she kind of softens to the Doctor, and yeah, it's just wonderful. You think the story's over, but it just keeps on, you know, it's such a bleak ending. The ending is so bleak, and yeah, I absolutely love that. Then we have Bastard the fifth Doctor story, Empire of the Rachnos, which again is one of my favourites. I didn't think I'd like this story, but I just love it. I think that it's such an epic story, especially the start with the TARDIS, sort of weaving in and out of this battle going on between the Time Lords, and the Rachnos, so we explore that war, which is great. Um, and this story really puts the Fifth Doctor in a really awkward position, you know, but who's, you know, whose side is he on? Is he on the Time Lord or is he on the Rachnos side? And yeah, this story is pretty grim as it progresses, and you really see how vicious the Rachnos are and how ruthless they are. So yeah, it's a brilliant story, and the sound design is just superb. One of the best sound designs I've heard for Big Finish. The third story, The Karenite Curse by Simon Gurrier. Probably my least favourite story, and that's me probably being quite controversial because I see that, that is everyone's favourite when I look at reviews. Um, but yeah, I think that this story is about 40 minutes too long. I think by the 20 minute mark you think the story's done, but it just plods along for an extra 40 minutes. I love the connection between 
uh, Jago and Lightfoot within this release and yeah I can see that if Jago and Lightfoot continued we would have had a Carrier Knight Jago and Lightfoot box set which would have been brilliant but yeah I don't think that this is a great story personally and I think that's what let to a set down for me. Then we have Day of the Vashnarada, um, the sort of sequel to um, the Tom Baker story. Great story where we see the Vashnarada being engineered for the Time War and that's such a brilliant concept and we see a new, see a new version of the Vashnarada introduced within this story called the Narada Vashta. So yeah, number nine, classic Doctor's New Monsters. <laughs> At number 8 we have a main range release and it is Zoltis. Now, I will be honest, I didn't think that I would like this story when it was first released. Just look at the cover, I thought, you know what, I'm not really a fan. The cover's not, you know, giving me anything uh, to get excited about. But when I listened to it, I was just like, wow, this is brilliant. As the story progresses, it just gets better and better. And it's the Fifth Doctor and Vampires. Brilliant. I love that. Anything with Time Wars and Vampires, I'm going to love because I love the whole sort of mythology around that, it's just great. So you see the fifth doctor and vampires. So it's absolutely wonderful. The story is so 80s. I mean, the cover just shows that it is very 80s. And it does seem very JNT, the story, but this is JNT done right. I mean, there's a fantastic supporting character, I think called Sabine, um, who's just absolutely lovely, very funny. Um, just a very good story for Tegan because we see Tegan put in a very interesting role within this story. Um, and we get a nice little third Doctor reference, which I like. Um, but yeah, it's just a real great story, full of danger, this story. It's just so great, and the world, what is created, Zoltis, is brilliant. It's just a fantastic story, and I love Zoltis. <laughs> At number seven, we have a Companion Chronicle release, which is the first Doctor Companion Chronicle box set, volume two. Now, if you saw the review of this, you know this would be on the list, and yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, it contains four stories, Fields of Terror, Across the Darkened City, Bonfire of Vanities, and The Plague of Dreams. Each story, I would say, represents a different era of the Hartnell era. So the first story, Fields of Terror, is with Stephen and Vicky, and it's very much a psychological thriller, and it's brilliant because it plays with horror really well, and it's set between sort of the French Revolution, and it's kind of, I guess, a sequel after the Reign of Terror, and it's just brilliant. It's just really good psychological thriller, this one is. Absolutely wonderful. Across the Darkened City is Stephen and a Dalek. It's a two-hander between Stephen and a Dalek. It's brilliant. There's a lot of danger on this world, what's created, and it's just really wonderful. It's probably, I think it might be my, ooh, I think it might be my favorite of the set. It's just brilliant. And once you listen past part two's credits, it does link in with a Patrick Troughton Dalek story. And yeah, it's just absolutely wonderful. Bonfire of Vanities is just a great story, mixing sort of Bonfire and Halloween in one with Ben and Polly. And you might be wondering how how can Big Finish do that? Because the Ben and Polly first Doctor story sort of all link because they all sort of lead into one. But there's a clever way around what Big Finish do with it, and it's just great. And the story really plays with how frail the first Doctor is, and we see Elliot Chapman, who plays Ben. Um, does his first Doctor voice and he does a brilliant job. It's just a wonderful story again. Um, then we have Plague of Dreams, which I absolutely love. It's a great story which really does push the Companion Chronicle format. You know, this really does shine. It can only work as a Companion Chronicle. You know, it's a wonderful story, very imaginative and creative. And we see Annika Wills probably give her the best performance, I think, in Big Finish. I think she's absolutely wonderful in Plague of Dreams. I think if you're a 1960s Doctor Who fan, you're going to want to pick this up because I think each story represents, you know, one of the aspects of the Hartnell era. So Fields of Terror is the historical. Then you've got Across the Darkened City, which is your sci-fi thriller. Then the third story, Bonfire of Vanities, is the sort of contemporary story which first started in the War Machines. And then you've got the creative and imaginative story, uh, which I think really sums up the 60s era of Doctor Who because 60s Who, you know, is full of creativity and imagination. And that's what Plague of Dreams is, you know, fun imaginative storytelling and Guy Adams really does push the boundaries of the Companion Chronicle format. So at number seven we have the first Doctor Companion Chronicle box set volume two. <music> so at number six we have the Tenth Doctor Adventures volume two which I've just recently reviewed and we see Rose, well Billy Piper, join Big Finish. 
Um, so yeah, we have three stories. We have Infamy of Azaros by John Dorney, Sword of a Chevalier by Guy Adams, and Cold Vengeance by Matt Fitton. And yes, I feel like Big Finish listened to what people said about Volume 1 because Volume 1 was very simple stories, you know, very stripped back for Big Finish's usual standard. Whereas I feel like this box set caters for all listeners, for new and old, as it does have a very classic feel to them. And I feel like the stories, they did kind of step outside the box in the way they told the story. So yes, so the first story, story Infamy of the Zaros, is probably the most new series style story. It does feel very Russell T Davis. Um, you know, it does feel like a series two episode, what wasn't transmitted, and they've just adapted for audio. Uh, it's the only story to feature Jackie, and Jackie is a real highlight within this release. He's just so brilliant within this. Um, you know, the story starts off quite light and fluffy, um, you know, and quite comedic. You know, in the first five minutes, I was just grinning like a madman. It was just brilliant. But when we get sort of the halfway mark, the story does take a dark turn and it starts to play with death, does have consequences. And that's what I really like. And the Tenth Doctor gets a real brilliant speech when he's standing up against Azaros. It's just brilliant, and you know, the questions, you know, this story keeps you guessing throughout. It's just utterly brilliant. Second story, so I love the Chevalier it. by Guy Adams. Again, absolute hoot. Um, you know, it does feel very new series in the format, um, in the sense that the Doctor and Companion meet a historical figure, and that historical figure joins them for the adventure. And yeah, the historical figure in this is the Chevalier Dion. And I dare I say it, I found this quite educational because I haven't heard of this historical figure and she's a very interesting character. And I think Guy Adams did a really good job of informing you um, on this character if you haven't heard of her before. And yeah, it's just a great historical adventure. It does feel very classic. The monster, you know, feels very classic, you know, a monster straight out of the Philip Hinchcliffe era. Um, but yet it does have that series two feel to it in the form of like the exorbital off. It's kind of the exorbital off done right, I guess. And it's just absolutely brilliant. It's just wonderful. I love the sort of Chevalier. It's just great. You know, it does have that sort of uh, girl in the fireplace, tooth and claw vibe to it, which is great. And they're two of my favourite Series 2 episodes, so I love it a bit. The third and final story, Cold Vengeance by Matt Fitton, where we see the Tenth Doctor versus the Ice Warriors. And I'm a massive Ice Warrior fan, and the Tenth Doctor was my childhood Doctor, so I'm naturally going to love it. And personally, I did find this story a bit disappointing. Um, but, you know, if you love the Seeds of Death and Monster Paladin, then you'll enjoy this, because the Ice Warriors do seem very classic in that sense. They sound very classic, they sound more classic than new series. And yeah, it's a very good moral story, but it's just not up to scratch as the other two stories, but still a very good set and highly recommend you get it because like I said, this story, you know, this box that has something for everyone, Infamy of the Zaros is your true new series story, which does link into a series two arc. It has a nice little reference to that. Sword of a Chevalier is just your fun historical adventure. And then your Cold Vengeance is your sci-fi space thriller. <laughs> So we've now reached the top five. So at number five, you might consider this cheating, but it's my list and it's my rule. So we have the Fourth Doctor Adventures Series 6. And I will be honest, I was very skeptical about this series because it's set in Season 18. And Season 18 isn't one of my favourite seasons of Doc 2 ever. You know, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so we kickstart the series with the Beast of Kravenos. So we see the Fourth Doctor and Romana reunite with Jago or Lightfoot. Um, and yeah, this story is worth it just for the interactions. It's just utterly brilliant. We see K9 become an act at the Regency Theatre and K9 doing a Q&A. It's just utterly brilliant and so funny. Um, you know, Jago has obviously met Romana before in Romana 1. And, you know, he thinks that the Doctor's got two friends called Romana. It's just utterly brilliantly and it does feel very season 18. And just a perfect way uh, to set off the series. Then we have the Eternal Battle which is probably my favourite. If I was to pick what my favourite of the series is probably Eternal Battle. Um, we see this sort of story set on this sort of World War One no man's land planet with Sontarans. It's just utterly brilliant. The interaction the fourth Doctor has is brilliant. It's so funny. Um, but the story is quite grim because the dead don't stay dead and it's just an eternal battle going on. So we've got a zombie, Sontarans, you know, everywhere you look there is danger. It's just brilliant. And the imagery of this story creates like the Sontarans in trench warfare and charging over no man's land, it's great. And just the thought of zombie Sontarans is just brilliant. Absolutely love the Eternal Battle. Cavan, Scott and Mark Wright, brilliant, just utter perfection. The third story, The Silent Scream, um, brilliant. I mean, I will be honest, when I first listened to this, I was just like, yeah, I'm not really enjoying this. 
when I re-listened to it, I thought, you know what, this is real great. This is a real great story. It is a great little tribute to the silent movie era, as you can see the title is a play on that. Um, yeah, the Doctor becomes a bit of a fanboy uh, with meeting one of his idols, which is Loretta Waldolf, um, which is great. Um, and the Doctor becomes a bit of a film star in this, and we've got K-9, you know, rocketing down a motorway. It's just brilliant, and part two does become rather creepy um, with the whole sort of uh, surgery thing. So yeah, it's a very good story that I find. Then we have number four, which is Death Rass. Um, yeah, very season 18 style story, you know, this whole submarine in space. You know, this is a very sci-fi story. This is probably the most closest to season 18 this series got. And it's wonderful, absolutely love it. One of my favorites from the series, actually. Then we have The Haunting of Malkin Place, which is basically the fourth Doctor does the Chimes of Midnight. Um, you know, this is Full Morine's first um, Doctor Who script. Obviously, it's not the first Big Finish release, but the first one he ever wrote for Big Finish, and it's such a wonderful script. Um, it's very much like The Woman in Black, if you're familiar with that, with the whole sort of remote house on this sort of island, and once the sea comes in, you're trapped, and the whole sort of horror element. It does play on with that, and it's just absolutely great. Love The Haunting of Malkin. Subterranea, probably the weakest in the series for me, but it does have that season 18 vibe to it. And I like the idea what the story has, but yeah, I don't think it's executed that well. But yeah, Subterrain is still good, but probably the dud of the series. Then we have The Mavellan Grave by Andrew Smith. Again, a fantastic story. Absolutely love this. You know, we see a new form of Mavellan in this, and it's just a great... I guess it's a run the runaround of the series, but it's utterly brilliant. Then I we have that. the series finale, The Skin of the Sleek and The Thief Who Stole Time by Mark Platt. Um, yeah, this, I think Mark Platt created such a wonderful world with this, this sort of frozen jelly sea is such a wonderful idea and the culture he built within this story is really great. Uh, we see Romana uh, reunite with one of her friends from the Academy, so that causes a very interesting uh, thing. So yeah, this story just has some great imagery and I think that it is a pretty satisfying end to the series. And yeah, it does feel very season 18, it does seem like something you'd see in the East Space trilogy and yeah. Very good, I did enjoy this finale, it's a very satisfying end. Not the best of the series, but not the worst, just a very satisfying end to the series. And then before, we have one of Big Finish's most recent releases, and that is the War Master starring Derek Jacobi. Now, I wasn't exactly sure how this release would work, because the Master, well, the Derek Jacobi Master was found as a, a baby, but then you remember the fob watch, you know, false memories, and then it kind of makes sense, and you're just like, oh yeah, and then you listen to this, and you're just like, wow, this is amazing, I feel like this shows the time war at its best, I think this is Big Finish's best version of the time war, what they've created, um, Derek Jacobi is just an utter force within this release, you know, he's so, you know, he's funny, but he's kind of, you just can't help but like him, but there's something so untrustworthy with him, it's just utterly brilliant, um, I haven't reviewed this yet, but I'm definitely going to review this in the future because it's just brilliant so I'll give you a sneak peek of my thoughts on the story so beneath the viscoid is very similar to the first war doctor story the innocence so if you like that story and that's personally one of my favorite war doctor stories then you're going to like beneath the viscoid I love the whole idea of this sort of underwater city and the Daleks underwater it just seems like something you'd see in the comics back in the 60s and you know the master pretending to be the doctor it's so good and when you think the story's all over and the master does something so unpredictable. It's so brilliant. This, you know, you can't predict these stories. It's just so brilliant. You know, you think you know the master, then you don't. It's just utterly brilliant. And the second story, the good master, um, is set on this sort of hospital world. And the, you know, I will say the first two stories have such an incredible world created. It's so brilliant. I love that the, the world what they created. Um, and we see the master meet his companion called Cole. Um, who would go on to the you know, next three stories. Um, but yeah, good master. I've seen a lot of people say it's the weakest of the set, but I personally think it's you know one of the best of the set. Um, but yeah, then we move on to Skyman. This is probably the most master-like story. You know, this story focuses on the master's new friend, I should say, well, friend, um, called Cole, um, where we see him sort of become engrossed and trying to help people in the time war. And the master's just busy trying to grow great for wine. And that's just great. I like that. Um, so yeah, this is quite interesting to see. So it's more of a character piece for Cole than the Heavenly Paradigm. I'm not going to say too much. I'll save that for the review. But yeah, a very good box set. I think this is Big Finishes has done the time war at its best. And I think 
you know, beneath the Viscoid does is going to link into um, the Gallifrey Time War Boxer because we see the Master shooting off to Gallifrey. So I can only presume that's where we're going to see the Master in the Time War Gallifrey box set. So there we go, number four. And number three, we have a short trip, and that is the Jigo and Lightfoot Revival Act 1 and Act 2. Um, yes, so if you think about getting this release, I would say hold your horses, because it is being released physically in May uh, this year um, in the Jago and Lightfoot Forever box set. So if you want to get it physically, I would say it's definitely worth getting a physical copy of it, because it's such a brilliant story. But if you're not too fussed on getting stuff physically, then by all means get the download right now. Um, but yes, if you're familiar with the Mahogany Murderers, then you'll kind of know how this story is structured, in the sense that instead of um, Jago and Lightfoot telling the story in the Red Tavern, we see them telling this story in the seminar in front of these gentlemen. Or is it, are they gentlemen? Who knows, you'll have to listen to the story to find out. Um, but yeah, we see Jago and Lightfoot meet the 10th Doctor. Um, I, it's a really hard lot to spoil this release because it, there is one big spoiler I'm trying to not say, but I think Big Finish should put the cover on the website now, and I don't want to be the person who spoils it for you. Um, but yeah, we see Jago and Lightfoot meet the 10th Doctor, and the 10th Doctor is dying, he's about to regenerate because it's set in sort of the end of time when he's visiting all his people with that final glory lap in the end of time part two. Um, we've got uh, Lightfoot on the island of Minos, then we've got uh, Jago in London, so there's quite a bit of scale to it. It's just a real shame we could never get a Jago and Lightfoot story with the 10th Doctor because I think that would just should be a brilliant full cast adventure. I think that would have been brilliant. Imagine the 10th Doctor, Wilf, and Jago and Lightfoot. That would have been phew, an ultimate audio. Um, but yeah, I will say Jago is with another Doctor. I'm not going to say which Doctor that is because that is a big spoiler. I don't want to spoil. But yeah, and Trevor Baxter does such a wonderful job bringing the 10th Doctor to life and the cliffhanger for Act 1 is just so brilliant and you're just like I need to listen to Act 2 and the time when I listened to this I had to wait a month for it um, so I was just like how how am I going to cope a month you know waiting for this cliffhanger to be resolved it's just utterly brilliant and yeah definitely worth checking out the Jago and Lightfoot revival Act 1 and Act 2 it's just a brilliant release wonderful and it is quite a sad release in the sense that that was the last thing Trevor Baxter recorded as Lightfoot, but it's such a brilliant story to go out on. It's such a wonderful story, and yeah, I absolutely love it. At number two, we have volume four of the New Adventures of Bernie Summerfield, Ruler of the Universe. Now, if you're thinking about picking up this box set, definitely pick up volume three first, because I think this volume three will certainly enhance your enjoyment for volume four. And yes, the reason why I love this box set is because of David Warner's Unbound Doctor. He's just brilliant. He's one of my favourite Doctors, dare I say. He's just utterly brilliant. And the pairing with him and Bernice are great. And the little arc they have within this series is just brilliant. And we see David Warner's Doctor trying to rule this Unbound Universe. Now, the Unbound Universe is dying. So that's un you're already intrigued by that because how is he going to save this dying universe how is he going to save everyone in this universe so that's the whole question of this box so that's kind of the main arc throughout this series and the thing with the unbound stories is they're not restrained by the tv series they can do whatever they want with this because this is the unbound universe so this makes the stories a lot more unpredictable this makes it a lot more tense listening i guess and i will say the stories are a lot more darker in the unbound universe um, though they have this quite, you know, fun exterior and quite comedic exterior, but the actual interior is quite dark and bleak with this whole universe is dying. It is just so brilliant. Stop the Clock is probably the most Bernie's story where we see her being this, you know, being the archaeologist, what we all know and love, um, trying to set, or set up the arc with the whole apocalypse clock. Then my personal favourite, and I think this is the reason why this release is so high up, and that is asking for a friend we see the Unbound Doctor visit a psychiatrist. So we get to see how the Unbound Doctor works. You wouldn't see that on TV Doctor Who, the Doctor visits a psychiatrist. So this is really grabbing the Unbound format by the horns and running with it. It's so brilliant. We see some great funny moments. We see the Unbound Doctor drunk. Uh, we see sort of a glimpse at the Unbound Time War 
Um, so that's quite interesting. Trawned is probably the runaround story, um, uh, but it does feel very Monty Python-esque, and that's brilliant. And then the final story, the true savior of the universe, where we see Mark Gatiss is master in it, and I've got to say, he's a brilliant master, and he does a fantastic job of this. I think that this is a real great ending for the series, and I cannot wait for Volume 5, because that cliffhanger, phew, Volume 5 certainly got to be an interesting one. So at number two, we have Bernie Summerfield. Line 10, number one. So what is my favorite release of 2017's Big Finish catalog? Now, if you followed my channel, you'll probably know what it is, and it is Time in Office. Yes, I absolutely adore this release. This is a good use of an anthology release. This is basically um, following on after the, sort of the aftermath of the Five Doctors, I guess, in the sense that the Doctor was sort of, you know, asked to become Lord President, and the Doctor escapes in his TARDIS, as he does, because he doesn't want to do that. But then time catches up with him, and he's got to face his duty. And that's what this release explores, the Fifth Doctor becoming President on Gallifrey. And putting the Fifth Doctor in that role is certainly an interesting thing, and it just it's just wonderful. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, this is basically Doctor Who does the thick of it. You know, this is the closest thing we get to that. It's just a real great, you know, fun, comedic release. You know, it does have very sort of political elements, obviously, because it's on Gallifrey. But it's more of a comedy. It does have serious elements to it, but it is very fun. You know, it's just a fun, easy listen um, to listen to. You know, like I said, it is just four separate stories. It's just wonderful. Um, Tegan gets a wonderful role in this, being sort of the Earth ambassador. Um, it's great, you know, Tegan and Leela just winding up the fifth Doctor, it's great. Um, I didn't think that these, you know, three characters would work together, but they make such a wonderful TARDIS team, and I just want to hear more from them. You know, I absolutely love Time in Office. It's a great anthology release. You know, it is a great use of anthology release, you know, looking at four different areas of the fifth Doctor being Lord President on Gallifrey, and explores the Doctor's past as well, when he was at the Academy. So it's a great release, and probably the best cover of Big Finish this year. It's just a wonderful cover and just a real great story. Eddie Robson, you did a magnificent job. If you want to know my full thoughts on Time and Office, definitely check out my review because I'm very proud of it. Um, so yeah, that concludes my top 10 releases of Big Finish's 2017's catalogue. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have your 10 favourite Big Finish releases from 2017, comment them down below and I'll be sure to check them out. And uh, yeah, have a look. So yeah, thanks very much for watching this review. And I'll see you next time. So thank you very much and bye-bye.